kill all zombies. Yep, we're doing it again. And this time we are at the world's most haunted ship. Apparently one of the most haunted places in all of the world. And I know what you're thinking, Mikey. I've never seen anything scarier than whatever the fluff is happening with the fake tan on your arm right now. And to that I say, I understand. This is remnants from the Roosevelt haunted hotel video <laughs> because I filmed that last night in real lifetime, even though you guys saw it a week ago. So, you know, just, just ignore this for just a second and let me tell you some ghost stories while we do some makeup. Welcome aboard the Queen Mary. I just realized I don't think I've ever seen a ship up close and personal. I feel like I'm living a weird dream. Luckily, there's lots of lifeboats. Let's do this. So I'm on the Queen Mary. I'm alone. <laughs> Very alone right now. Everything's closed. Checked in pretty late to get the full spooky effect. I'm gonna get settled in. It's creepy. It feels very old. I'm, I'm glad that they haven't renovated it so much that it feels like a, like a new ship. Queen Mary is a gigantic ship. One could even call it Titanic because it is bigger and faster and stronger than the Titanic was. Its maiden voyage was in 1936, so it's old AF. And it looks it and it feels it and it smells it. So I'm at the front of the ship. It smells old, which is weird. Cause like it's a really strong smell, but I'm out in the open air too. Uh, we got these things, which are straight like iceberg dead ahead type stuff. Yeah. You know? This place definitely has a creepy vibe. A lot more so than the Roosevelt had. And it's got a history that is truly terrifying too. Creepy. Always. Shall we go down there? Let's go down there. You know, in Titanic, when the big smokestack falls in Titanic, you know that? I had no idea how freaking gigantic these things are. Can you see that? Terrifying. You would think that after Titanic we would have learned by now to not have bars at the end of stairs where you could, I don't know, potentially try to be getting a key and then drop it and have to go underwater and anyway. Although, I suppose they solved that. Because if the water got that high you could just, you could, okay. Alright, they thought of that. Good on you guys. But it reminds me of that. Have we not learned? Have we not learned? Is that enough room for someone to swim through? I don't know but it makes me uncomfortable. I feel like I'm in Titanic again. Really There's not a lot of places to go from here. How do I get to the top? Uh, what, what are those? So, I came to the back of the ship to look for the isolation ward and I found them. Can you see what that says? It's a little hard to see, but that sign says isolation ward. Apparently that's where they would quarantine people that were sick with communicable diseases, so. Seems like a jovial place. This ship has seen some shit, but I don't wanna say it all and have nothing to do during the makeup, so I'm gonna just get right into the makeup and then we can start telling ghost stories. But I will say this, this place already feels very different than the haunted hotel, the Roosevelt. This is like a true experience already and I haven't even started this video yet. Yo, the sky is super creepy looking right now. It doesn't really show up on my phone as much, but from my perspective, the sky just looks red and misty and looks like I'm in a, like I'm on Mars or something. So, <laughs> let's get into the makeup. So I'm keeping the makeup for each video somewhat thematic to the location that I'm in. You know, Marilyn for Haunted Hotel because there's ghost sightings of her there. For this one, I wanted to just go after the ship ocean kind of taking inspiration from what a actual drowned corpse might look like and then theatricalizing it <laughs> yes that's a word making it a bit more theatrical and having it be like a kind of like a zombie version like fishy teeth and fangs and unrealistic things too <laughs> 
But then, I was in a wig shop. <laughs> Darn it. And I saw the most epic wig I've ever seen. And it occurred to me that I could still do all the things I had already planned to do. All the prosthetics and supplies I had already bought for this would still work if I changed the look to a zombie or gore version of Ursula. Because that's what the wig is. So we are doing a gore Ursula today. Let's get this hair up and out of the way. So the first thing that I want to do is I have some prosthetics to apply. These are foam latex and I don't know if you can tell what this is just yet, but it's basically a double chin prosthetic. I have that, some nasal labia folds. That's what they're called. I know it sounds dirty, but it's not. And the reasoning for that is I picked these up when I thought I was going to do the drown corpse because drown bodies get bloated sometimes, like the belly will get really bloated. So in trying to keep with that theme, I wanted to try to make my face and my neck area look more bloated. So we have these prosthetics to do just that. So let's glue these babies on. I straight up just heard something. Did you hear it? That pop? You didn't hear it? There was a pop. Just so you know. It'll all be on the camera. It's true. Mm. Shit. Yep, did you hear what direction that came from? Behind us. Remember what's behind us? An empty locked room. Doesn't mean the metal doesn't creak. Why would it creak? It's not moving. Just saying. This is gonna hurt like a bitch to take off. <laughs> Cause it's where all the baby hairs sit. Look like I'm in a neck brace. Double chin. Done. Nasal labial folds. F f folds. Next. Whoa, that scared the poop out of me. So while I wait for my second nasal labial fold, to dry. Let's get some ship history in here, shall we? So this ship started out as like a cruise liner. In 1936, it had its maiden voyage and it had lots of then big timey celebs roll through its decks like Mary Pickford, Greta Garbo, Clark Gable, who also stayed at the Roosevelt, Winston Churchill, fancy stuff. But then it got turned into a warship in World War II. It even participated in uh, this little battle you might have heard of called D-Day. No biggie. When it was a wartime ship, they painted it gray and they started calling it the Grey Ghost, which is a badass name. And maybe that's what invited the ghosts. This thing survived a collision at sea and it set the record for carrying the most people ever on a floating vessel. Casual 16,000 people. Yes, folds. Ooh. Oh yeah, they move so well with the face. I have some prosade lips that just look gross and kind of like what I would imagine lips to look like if they had been soaked in water a long amount of time. Goodbye, nice lips. There's a dog hair in my prosthetic. <laughs> look like I have a mustache. <laughs> oh yeah, sexy. Lip injection's done. I got worms to crawl out of my face. That's what I want. Yes. As far as spooky things go here, there are apparently 150 known spirits on the ship, and if ghosts don't do it for you, there have been at least 49 deaths on the ship. Thought I heard something. Some of those ghosts include, of course, like little kids. There's stories of noises and giggling and hearing children. Um, creepy. Reports of seeing men and women, oftentimes dressed in old attire, like 1930s, 1940s era. Where does one apply worms, is the question. I don't know the answer. The engine room is apparently one of the most haunted places on the ship. There have been some deaths down there too, including the infamous Door 13, which has crushed two men to death. There are swimming pools that are no longer filled or used, but there's a lot of sightings that are around there. Reports of seeing wet footprints outside of the pool, even though it's empty. Seeing people about to dive in, and then no one's actually there. And I asked them, because I am a skeptic, I asked them if they were playing it up to scare the guests or if it was real to them. And she said it was very much real. And then she told me a story about how she got a call once to go clean a room. Got the wrong room number, but that room, before she could get up to it, the handle started wiggling a lot. It was locked and she didn't have the key for it because it, it wasn't a room that's open to the public. So she waited until she found someone with a master key to open that door and there was nobody in it. 
but she said that several people saw it, so it wasn't just her. Eel a worm. <laughs> Probably my favorite ghost story to come out of this is on one of its last transatlantic trips, I think it was going from England to New York, there was a man who went crazy and brutally murdered two women. So he was locked in a stateroom with a guard posted outside of his room. He apparently was banging on the door, screaming, asking for someone to get him out because someone was in there trying to murder him. The guard thought it was just a ruse so that he could escape, so he didn't answer his calls for help, and the guy inside eventually settled down, and he thought that he just decided to quit. Until... The police finally came to arrest this man, opened the door, and apparently found him basically slaughtered in the room with his entrails and body parts spread all over. Ever since then, people started complaining about weird happenings in the room to the point that people would leave halfway into the night of their stay, and they actually closed off the room completely in the 80s, and it wasn't able to be booked at all. That is room B340 and it is apparently the most haunted room on the ship. They did eventually reopen it for booking. Guess what room we're in? Okay, I'm walking to my room now. Uh, B340. place being creepy though. Got a Ouija board to welcome us. <laughs> hey. Uh, got a creepy closet over here. We have lots of stories written on the wall here. You know the weird part though is is that every other room marked. Like the number of the room is marked right here. B340, however, is not marked at all. Why is it not marked? The first time I came to the room, I was escorted by the woman that I checked in with. When she opened the door, Within like a second, she said, it's stuffy in here, I'll get you a fan. And she left, and that's true. This room is very warm and stuffy. So these are the last two rooms before my room. And when you get right past this last room, right here, it is noticeably heavier feeling, like stuffy. It smells kind of funny. There are certainly spots that just the energy to them feels different and I, I don't know what that is but if there is such a thing as energy feeling different in a space it's it's this right here <sighs> so the fan is delivered by housekeeping a woman comes in she's very nice but she kind of looked at me funny and smiled when she asked how I was enjoying my room so I said you seem spooked do you not like this room and she turned around and looked at me and she said, I brought a bodyguard with me. They're outside in the hallway. And I thought she was joking. I look out in the hallway, she brought someone with her. <laughs> her bodyguard that she brought with her to my room never stepped foot in this room, very much on purpose. She would not come in. So yeah, that's um, inspiring a lot of confidence. Now yes, that story is not confirmed. However, a quick look around this room and I found a little picture frame with some information about room B340. <sighs> the second report was filed by a staff captain in 1948. The ship's log reads, third class passenger, British subject, found dead in cabin B226. Details of the passenger's death have never been learned, however it was discovered that cabin B226 was later changed to B340. So this room. 
So, you know, there's the very real possibility that someone was dismantled in this room. But if that story wasn't true, either way, a body has been found in this room. So that's fine. I mean, not for him, but. So I was super excited when I got to book this room specifically. I want to see something. And so far, this room has not disappointed because it has already been very spooky. So room service just dropped off this meal for me. And no joke. He was like, you just get here? You, you, you've been here. And I was like, just settled in. And he was like, oh, you're in for a night then. And I was like, oh, why do you say that? And he was like, well, oh, first he reacted to the Ouija board. He was like, oh, you have a Ouija board. And I was like, are they not standard in every room? And he was like, that's the first one I've seen. I was like, okay. But he said that his boss told him that apparently the last guy who stayed in this room put the Ouija board in the shower to wash off the evil and started going around to the bar telling people that he was the devil and they had to kick him out. <laughs> So they either commit to this haunted shtick and they're all in on it or everyone's heard or seen some shit, I guess. And this room is clearly notorious because every person that we've interacted with so far has had something to say about it. And I've seen people now lurking in the hallway outside of this room like they're looking for it because everybody knows I got the most haunted room. Lucky me. Okay, you can't see what I'm seeing right now, but I just stopped recording and it keeps trying to focus right here. I can see a focus box of what face it's trying to pick up. Like it'll, it's set to a face and then a square will dance around the person's face to try to focus on it. I turned it off and it kept focusing. It's still focusing right here. It doesn't recognize my face. It thinks that the primary face in the frame is here. Granted, my face is starting to look a bit different, but it's literally dancing around the screen right now. I'm gonna record this on my phone. I've never seen it do this. I literally have never seen it do this. The second, what the f The second I started recording it, it went back to me. I'm not kidding. It was just dancing around the corner the whole time. And the second I turned my phone on, it went back to me. That's super weird. I mean, like it probably means nothing, but it's still weird. It's we it was dancing around the corner back there on nothing. And now it's having no tr it's having no trouble finding me. The second I pull out my phone, it's been doing that for two minutes. It's like Ripley. The f it is like Ripley. As soon as I get my camera out to film something stupid, she does. <laughs> She knows, and she stops doing the thing. That was weird. I'm watching you now, camera. I heard a thing. We got worm prosthetics. These aren't worm prosthetics, they're scar prosthetics, but they kind of look like they might be worms under your skin, which, in the context of those, makes perfect sense. This is gonna be a trend, y'all. Mark my words. Worm brow scar. You can't even see that. This is pointless. Yeah, scars. Ah, these battle scars. I don't know how that song goes, but there is a song. I heard a noise. It was scary. It was real. We're all gonna die. Look at me. I'm tough. T U F F. I got worms crawling out of my face. I got like lightning bolt scars. Ah, huh, true. This is like a lightning scar, and I have it on my forehead. If I had ever seen Harry Potter, I might be able to make some kind of a joke here. But I haven't, so I can't. Technically, I did see the first one. I just don't remember it. Yeah, I'm saying it wasn't memorable. What you gonna do? Someone in a room nearby probably just heard that and thought, ghosts. But it's just me being a creep in the other room, the haunted room. So I know that I did a lot of prose transfers in the last video, and I'm doing a lot again here, but I've never actually mixed prose transfers with foam latex prosthetics before, I don't think. I don't know if they actually go together, so I'm just experimenting here, hoping that it works out. It might not, but don't worry because I'm also mixing in the more classic out of kit, simple ingredient FX looks this Halloween. We're just starting it off strong with a lot going on on the face all at once. I just saved the looks where I could use a lot of prosthetics and take my time for these kinds of ones like in a room, not bothered. But as you'll see in an upcoming video, I didn't always put myself in a situation where I had the luxury of time or complete safety. So for some other locations, things are much faster and the looks are much simpler. So enjoy these more elaborate, busy looks whilst you can. If you guys see a ghost behind me at any point in this video, you should totally let me know. Because I might have missed it. There might be one right behind me and I just don't know it. 
Wouldn't that be fun? Yes, they can go together. Sweet. Oh yeah. <laughs> I look like <laughs> I look like a weird FX experiment. Like I just fell into a sticky selection of FX products and this is how I landed. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stretch, look for some ghosts, try to get them to come out and play. And then we're gonna paint this puppy. <laughs> I just got too much powder in my mouth. Pants look like they've been ghosted. What color should we paint me? So first I'm using a little bit of Pax paint just to seal the foam latex. All right, face is starting to look bulbous and weird. Zombie palette. Maybe it'll summon zombies or just zombies. This is a good look. <laughs> oh, it looks really funny when I smile. Actually, no. I'm gonna use the Down and Dirty palette because there's a straight up purple in this one that I wanna see what it looks like. Oh, she's purple. I don't have a plan. I'm using a pearlescent cream paint now to, I don't know what, we'll see. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. We're theorizing here. So what I'm trying to do here is layer a lot of colors onto the skin, and then I'm strategically kind of covering them back up again so that it looks like there's translucency in a lot of different layers. I'm also trying to aim a little bit on the purplish blue side to one, make it feel like a theatrical kind of waterlogged look, and also Ursula's purple, so you feel me. But I'm a little stumped too where I go from here. No. No? No. Yeah, like it. Mm-mm. Maybe the ghosts are coming up. Out to play. Yeah. There you go, that's my foot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like every time you talk I hear it. <laughs> Trying to uncover these worms I got going on on my face. They got lost in the paint job. There's a lot going on now, so they might just have to stay lost, but whenever I hear the word worms now, I just think of Ripley, because every time her belly makes a little noise, I think she has worms in her belly. And I asked her that. I asked her that when I turned myself into her, because I heard them. I heard that. Do you have worms in your belly? You all heard them. You see red worm. A worm a day keeps the ghosts away, unfortunately. Gross. Worms. All right, we're at the finishing touches. I'm just giving myself some boob veins because everyone knows that Ursula had those in the Disney cartoon. Duh. This is a very busy look. Wasn't quite planning on that necessarily, but that's where it took us. And I like to go where the look takes us. Should we go up on E deck? A deck? B deck? A deck? I feel like we should go up on deck. See what's up there. Maybe all the ghosts are chilling up there. Maybe I'll get kicked out though. <laughs> I need mascara. I just feel like I need mascara, so that's happening. This is one of those looks that I feel like I keep going because it doesn't seem right, but I think once I get all the accessories on, it'll be good. To lube up these worms. Oh yeah, now we're talking. Contacts, hair, teeth?
be my favorite look I've ever done, actually. That was freaking dope. I think if a ghost ran into me now, they should be afraid of me. Uh, this is a really hair-raising look, if you know what I'm saying. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you got sufficiently s I can't. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a lot of spit. Let's try just the top row. Thank you guys for watching. I hope that you are sufficiently spooked by the Queen Mary. I definitely am. But there are more videos coming in other haunted and spooky locations. Ah, ah, no! Anyway, <laughs> let me get the outro out of the way and then I'll worry about that. So make sure you subscribe for more. <laughs> so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of the others. My face is falling apart. Like this video if you saw a ghost in the background that I missed. If you've left a comment about the Disney Princess series in the last three years. If you get seasick or if you're not going to sleep tonight because you're thinking about the fact that I'm sleeping in a room where there was a man disemboweled in here. Anyway, let's not think about that. And hit the notification bell, even though it doesn't work. Maybe someday it will. Who knows? We'd love to hang and chat, but I'm gonna have to wave you goodbye. I gotta go see some poor unfortunate souls. But for now, I'm gonna go sleep with the fishes. And ghosts. Ocean buns. Okay, see ya. Bye. I can't until I know that we're safe. When he was made a beeline for the car, I was like. I am in Jerome, Arizona. I'm scared. I am in a ghost town. He's coming back.